Hello friends, welcome to my part 2 on um, genomes of uh, copper age inhabitants of Israel. We're gonna start with this sample I1164, it's a woman. <coughs> Her mitochondrial lineage is J2A2 and um, this is where she is from. Alright, uh, in terms of what she scores for the autosomal DNA, this is what she scores with Eurogenes K13. It looks like she's mostly scoring East Mediterranean, Red Sea, and West Mediterranean. Um, I can think of a couple ethnicities that might score similar to this. Maybe Cypriots, uh, maybe modern people of the Levant. But people of the Levant, there's, a, there's something tricky here, because people of the Levant will also score West West Asian, which she's not scoring. So she doesn't really have any of the Caucasus or uh, Iranian Neolithic farmer admixture. Uh, in her case, she's pretty much just Anatolian Neolithic farmer plus um, uh, Natufian, right? That's what she is. Okay, so let's move on to her results with my trade predictor. Yeah, this is the right sample. Uh, let's start with Nashakot. This is what she scores with Nashakot. Kind of crazy result, actually. She's scoring blue eyes. She's got blue eyes. Interesting. All right, didn't expect that. It looks like she's also got dark blonde hair. And it looks like she's got lighter fair skin as well. And this is her pretty good eye color. Uh, for the hair texture, uh, it looks like she's got straight hair. Interesting, so she's just very uh, European looking. Let's find out why. Okay, uh, this is why. She has blue eye haplotype 2, this is why. Uh, and she does not have blue eye haplotype 3. Interesting. So, um, blue eye haplotype 2 is something that people typically associate with Western hunter-gatherers. You know, there's this myth online that having blue eye haplotype 2, if you have it, it's because you have ancestry from Western hunter-gatherers. I don't believe that at all, because time and time again I've seen people who have no Western hunter-gatherer admixture who have blue eye haplotype 2. Uh, statistically speaking, even Native Americans, unmixed Native Americans, have blue eye haplotype 2 at a certain frequency, so... You know, this whole Western hunter-gatherer thing, I don't really I don't really believe in that. Let's go ahead and check what she scores for OCA2 and HERC2 eye color calculator. So this calculator only takes into account OCA2 and HERC2 genotype. And with that, she is also scoring blue eyes. Interesting. Alright, now let's check her polygenic risk scores. For the polygenic risk scores, she is scoring below average odds of schizophrenia. Actually, really low. That was, uh, that's interesting. I haven't seen any... Uh, Israel, people from Israel in the Copper Age with above average score for schizophrenia. And that's kind of surprising to me because nowadays, maybe I'm being a little bit racist, but Jewish people are very, very uh, predisposed to this particular issue. Uh, high score for type 2 diabetes. And nothing for Alzheimer's was found. All right. She's got zero risk variance for breast cancer out of six. Good statistic. And zero risk variance for testicular cancer out of two. Wow, that's kind of bad. Really, really low quality file in terms of the cancers for breast cancer and testicular. In total, there should be like 40. If you have like a whole genome sequence file, there should be like 40 uh, variants out of 40 in, in your result. But in this case, you can see it's kind of a low quality file. All right. Uh, what's interesting about her is she has two derived no-go learning variants in DRD2 pro variants in pro. So very stereotypically European genotype, uh, genotype that comes together with a decreased number of dopamine d receptor sites in the brain. Um, she has GG in TAC1 though, so she's got a normal human genotype in TAC1, slightly higher number of dopamine d receptor sites in the brain. Good for her. Um, nothing is in the file here, it's a really low quality file. Two alleles for increased risk of myopia, high odds of myopia, okay. Uh, no micro P, good, because remember in the last video there was somebody with micro P who had um, heterozygous genotype for this mutation. Mix of muscle types, likely more sprinter than endurance athlete. Okay. And no shell shaped incisors and not East Asian in ancestry. All right. Uh, for Zyprexa, it looks like she's got um, more likely to gain weight if taken Zyprexa. And less, uh, less, uh, less odds of psychosis induced by meth, meth abuse. All right. So for familiar with an fever, she's only genotyped for one for one variation where she doesn't have any risk variance, but we can't really know that she doesn't have any of the other uh, g any of the other variants for familiar Mediterranean fever because most of that stuff is simply not in the file. 
um, very healthy genotype in MCHFR. Most common genotype lower odds of various health issues. All right, and for breast cancer, as you can see, none of the stuff that was tested for, none of the stuff that uh, was found in her file, she has. She doesn't have any risk variance for uh, for any of the things that were found in her file. Good for her. She's got this genotype, which corresponds to a slightly increased risk of, of um, leukemia. Okay. Okay, that's uh, we we came back all the way around. That was uh, the first sample. Now let's let's move on to this. All right, this is the second sample. Uh, it's a male. Let's check his Y DNA. Uh, his Y DNA seems to be T1A1. I don't know where that is. I, I'm not familiar with T1 Y DNA at all. Uh, his mitochondrial lineage is. It looks like HV1A. Oh, that's crazy. I don't. I have no clue what that is. I have no clue where that's most common. If you if you do, um, you know, leave a comment or something. Okay, so let's move on to something I do know and do know what to talk about. Let's move on to his um, autosomal DNA results. <coughs> this is what he scores for Nashakot. Uh, with Nashakot, he's scoring, it looks like light brown eyes, black hair, and intermediate or dark skin. Intermediate or olive skin or dark or brown skin. And when it comes to his hair texture, his hair texture is predicted to be straight, but you know, sort of curly and wavy are also sort of here as well. They're kind of here too. Um, and his eye color, that's his predicted eye color. All right, now let's check why he's scoring the way he is. Um, he does not have blue eye type 3, okay. He has AA here. Okay, so he has this genotype, which is usually predictive of blue eye type 2, but we don't really know whether or not he actually has blue eye type 2 because that stuff is not in the file. All right, let's check his uh, OCA2 and HERC2 eye color estimator. This might be interesting. So with the OCA2 and HERC2 eye color estimator, he's scoring light brown eyes. All right, so it seems that... Um, based on some of his genotypes in this Okato and Herc2 region, he's probably got darker eyes. Despite, you know, uh, this genotype right here, he still probably have darker eyes. Let's go ahead and check his polygenic risk scores. For the polygenic risk scores, he's got an average score for schizophrenia for, um, you know, Northern Europeans. Uh, I, don't, I think uh, Northern European is a closer reference to uh, copper age person from Israel than Sub-Saharan African is, right? So let's just say, if you, if you compare him to Sub-Saharan Africans, it looks like he's got below average, but uh, if it looks like he's got above average, but we're going to compare him to Northern Europeans because I think that's a closer reference to his actual ethnicity. For type 2 diabetes, he's got above average score for that, and he's got a very below average score for Alzheimer's. He's got four risk variants for breast cancer out of eight, and ten risk variants. Wow, that's crazy. <coughs> so he's got a lot of risk variants for both breast cancer and testicular cancer. Very crazy. Uh, and it's a man too, so testicular cancer for him might be uh, might be a reality. All right. Uh, his warrior in Compt, very interesting, not something you see very often. And his warrior in MAOA, definitely very uncommon combination of warrior in MAOA and warrior in Compt. Overall, he's probably intermediate between warrior and warrior. Uh, he does not have any no-go learning variants in DRT2's Pro, Florentin Pro, so pretty much higher, slightly higher number of dopamine due to receptors in the brain, slightly higher odds of stuff like schizophrenia. <coughs> he does not have the A1 uh, allele and TAC1, so once again, slightly higher number of dopamine due to receptors in the brain. Um, does not have long form 5 HTTLPR, so it seems he's got short form 5 HTTLPR just like most people. And he does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. <coughs> for OXTR, he's got a genotype for um, higher levels of empathy. Interesting. Actually, no, he's got a genotype for intermediate, even higher and lower levels of empathy because it's heterozygous. And one genotype for lower levels of empathy. So overall, probably a little bit more sociopathic than not. For diabetes, he does not have type 1 diabetes, good for him. For hemochromatosis, he is not a carrier of C282Y hemochromatosis mutations, good for him. For Alzheimer's, he's got these two genotypes, which both lead to a decreased risk of Alzheimer's, good for him. Uh, no micro P, good for him. Impaired muscle performance, likely endurance athlete rather than power athlete, good for him. Um, two fat gene variants and FCOs, RS 1949609 nine, higher odds of obesity and sleep apnea. So he's got a little bit of a predisposition to being overweight. He also likely has photic sneeze reflex, which is very interesting. If, in case you don't know what that is, 
Uh, when you look at the sun and that makes you sneeze, that's called photic sneeze reflex. Uh, and no variance for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A. And also very non-East Asian genotype in EDAR. And he's also not an Asian flusher. So he doesn't really have any of the uh, uniquely Asian traits such as East Asian EDAR and being an Asian flusher. In case you don't know what uh, being an Asian flusher is, it's when uh, certain people of East Asian descent, not all of them, but some of them, when they drink uh, alcohol, they flush up and they can't really, they get really drunk from a little, like a l really small amount of alcohol and they get addicted really easily, stuff like that. Um, it looks like he's more likely to gain weight if taken Zyprexa. And it looks like he does not have any risk variance for familiar Mediterranean fever, but then again, only one is found in the file, unfortunately. For the MTHFR panel, he's got this genotype in MTHFR, which means possibly impaired folate metabolism. Very interesting. Uh, and this genotype, which is common and leads to slightly higher than average blood pressure. For breast cancer, these are the risk variants he's got. Um, they are pre it's pretty uncommon to have risk variants in these in these variations. It's not all that common, to be honest. So it's a little bit of an extreme result, in my opinion. I've talked about it previously. All right, so that was um, that was it. Oh, I missed this one. Uh, three times ex uh, increased testicular cancer risk for men. Well, yep. Uh, that was this sample. Now let's move on to the third and final sample. Now we're moving on to the final sample. Also a male, also with T1A, uh, Y-DNA, also living, it looks like 45 to 30, 35 centuries before the common era. Uh, mitochondrial DNA is H, and the sample name is I1166, just to let you know, so you aren't in the dark about what I'm doing here. Alright, so this is I1166, just double checking, let's check what he scores with Nashakot. Uh, with Nashakot, it looks like he's scoring hazel eyes, hazel or light brown eyes, brown hair, intermediate or olive skin, and um, it looks like wavy hair texture. All right, kind of a typical, uh, kind of a typical phenotype for a Mediterranean person today. I don't know about Israel and like Jews and Palestinians who live there. I think they are a little bit darker. I imagine them to have brown eyes and black hair instead of brown hair. But like for Greek people, I think this is a very typical phenotype. But I'm just going on a tangent right now. Um, so this individual actually has blue eye haplotype too. Very interesting. So, once again, kind of uncommon. You don't see it very often today in modern people from this area. Uh, he has likely heterozygous genotype and blue haplotype too. So, uh, there's a dislinkage here because these two variants are typically inherited together. They're located right next to each other. Uh, having light, light uh, variant in BH2 without having... Because I also call this BH2. To me, BH2 is both of these variants together. Uh, just because of how closely linked they are. So it's surprising that he has intermediate or heterozygous genotype here. He does not have blue haplotype 3. And he's got this genotype, which means likely does not have blue haplotype 1, which is kind of crazy. Uh, because how can you have blue haplotype 2 without blue haplotype 1? But once again, this is not the main BH1 uh, variation. The main, the, the main one is here, and he's not genotyped for the main one. Alright, let's go ahead and look at his... Um, Polygenic risk scores. So for the polygenic risk scores, it looks like he's got a below average score for schizophrenia. It looks like he's got a below average score for type 2 diabetes. And it's look, it looks like he's got a below average score for Alzheimer's as well. He's got zero risk variance for breast cancer out of four. Four is very little. So once again, it's not a very high quality file. Uh, and eight risk variance for testicular cancer out of 12. 12, once again, is kind of little. So it's not a very high quality file. But eight risk variance out of 12 is actually really crazy. Uh, it's a lot. And we're going to get into that a little bit later and find out uh, the logistics of it all. So he's got a GG in Compt's Val methodation, meaning Val Val genotype. He's a warrior in Compt. Uh, he's a warrior in MAOA, though, so uh, those kind of cancel out. Compt and MAOA are both enzymes that break down dopamine. So if you have uh, a little bit more of the Compt enzyme being a warrior and a little bit less of the MAOA enzyme being a warrior in MAOA, uh, overall, you still have about average or normal amount of enzymes that break down dopamine. At the end of the day, you still end up with intermediate levels of dopamine. Uh, he's got one that I've no good or invented related to spirofrenitine pro, so intermediate genotype here. Um, he's not genotype for TAC1, which is a which is a big bummer. Um, 
nothing interesting here. So this individual doesn't carry the European lactose persistence mutation, doesn't have the European lactose persistence mutation, and he's got two variants for higher levels of empathy in OXTR, very interesting. Um, does not have type 1 diabetes. Also is not a carrier for the C282Y hemochromatosis mutation, probably doesn't have hemochromatosis. However, we don't really know because we don't know these two genotypes, which are also very important. Um, and he has these two genotypes which lead to a decreased risk of Alzheimer's. All right. No micro P, good. Good, very good. Very ple pleasant to see that. Uh, smaller cranial lower IQ. I don't really care about this IQ. I'm going to ignore them from, from this point on. Uh, mix of muscle types, likely more sprinter than endurance athlete. All right. Uh, no fat gene variants in FTOs, RS-99, um, 99, I was very surprised when I find out, when I found out that this uh, variation was actually called the fat gene. I was really really surprised by that because it sound, it just sounds so mean. But he doesn't have any fat gene variants, and it looks like he doesn't have a predisposition to obesity. Does not have folic sneeze, sneeze reflex. No variants for increased pain sensitivity, and no East Asian EDAR once again. Um, it looks like he's got. Uh, genotypes that predispose him to having slightly higher than average likelihood of taking uh, of um, ga ga gaining weight from taking Zyprexa. However, there is this genotype which leads to less weight gain if taking Zyprexa, which is kind of surprising as well. Uh, the reason I'm saying it's surprising because these these variants that contribute to less weight gain are kind of rare. They're not very common. And he's got this genotype which leads to higher odds of meth induced psychosis. Shouldn't smoke meth, but I don't think that was an option for him. He's not a carrier of acutaneous albinism type 1B mutation. And for familiar Mediterranean fever, he's not a carrier of any of the risk variants for that. But there's, I mean, most of that stuff is simply not in the file. Maybe if, like, all of this was in the file, he'd be a carrier for some of them. But simply none of, none of them are in the file, so there you go. Uh, for MTHFR, it looks like he's got a genotype that's kind of typical for people, but uh, possibly impaired folate metabolism. Yeah, it's kind of typical. Most people score something like that. Most people don't have the healthy... I noticed that most people don't have the healthy genotype in MTHFR, which is kind of ironic. Uh, for cancers, slightly higher risk of testicular cancer. F three times increased risk of testicular cancer. Very crazy. All right, so... Uh, probably got a, b a little bit of an um, above average score for testicular cancer if I had to make a polygenic risk score for that. For leukemia, he's got once again increased risk of leukemia and none of the, none of the other genotypes are found in the file. All right. Well, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, that's his, that's all there is to this file and his traits. Uh, and thanks for watching until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Uh, I do want to remind you that you can download all three samples in 23andMe format from link which is in the description of the video. Goodbye.